everyone, and thanks for joining us today. This is another edition of our virtual book club. I want you to know we have another treat for you today, and I don't want you to miss it, but I don't want your friends to miss it either, either way. So I want you to start a watch party even right now. Share this right now. Share it right now because somebody is going to want to be a part of this life-changing interview as we uh, meet with another great author. Uh, I want to present to all of us today, uh, Yolanda Nickerson is going to be joining us today to share what she is working on. She is a renowned author, and we can't wait to see what is going to happen on today. Yolanda, how are you today? Hi, I am doing wonderful. Good, good to see you. So listen, tell us a little bit about yourself and who Yolanda Nickerson is. Well, uh, I'm Yolanda Nickerson, and um, I have, uh, I'm married to Apostle Larry Nickerson, who uh, we're the leaders of In God We Trust Ministries in Birmingham, Alabama. And right. so uh, I love to write, and uh, I have uh, several children as well as grandchildren, and I love being a grandmother. I uh, love being a first lady slash pastor, and uh, I just love encouraging people. Good, good, a good. Bit good. About me. Good. So, so let me get this right. You have already written 10 books. Yes, actually 10 plus this one makes 11 that I'm going to talk about today. Wow. And let God manifest it. Yes. So, so how did you get to 10 plus one, 11 books total? <laughs> how did we get to, how did you even get started in writing? Well, actually, you know what, uh, Pastor Holman, when I was about 11 or 12 years old, I was sitting in front of a black and white TV that was in uh, my bedroom. And one day I was actually looking at an author on TV and I said, I want to be an author one day. Well, little did I know, 30 years later, I would be a published author and would have written so many books. And so I started off back in... Um, 2007 and I wrote my first book uh, from victim to virtuous which represents brokenness to wholeness and one fourth of that book pretty much shares uh, my childhood things that I went through uh, the dysfunction the abuse things I encountered as a child and that obviously spilled over into my adult life and so when God had me to write that book he wanted me to share with women who uh, are broken so that they could uh, gain some information through that book to navigate them uh, to a place of wholeness. And then after that book, I birthed uh, the other a version for girls. Uh, and I also um, wrote a version for teen girl, for preteens. And so I have a series from Victim to Virtuous series. And wow. so again, it's all about uh, just helping uh, broken girls and women to navigate their way uh, through brokenness and become whole. Cool. So, so, so you get through all your, your series of books, and then now, last year, you launched your book, Decree It. Can you talk about how we get to decree it even right now? Well, here's the thing. I love to encourage God's people. I literally love to encourage his people. Primarily, my ministry is catered toward, you know, outside of our church, my ministry is catered toward uh, helping girls and women. And mm -hmm. so, but this particular book here, um, when I was, let me kind of rewind back for a minute and share something with you. In 2013, I was ordained as an evangelist. And when I was ordained as an evangelist, the, uh, the uh, apostle that charged me, she told me, she said, God's said, whatever you begin to decree with your mouth, he's going to manifest it. And so last year, well, actually, it was at the latter part of 2018 when I started writing this book. And all of what she told me came back to me because ever since then I had been decreeing and declaring and I had been seeing how things would manifest in my life. So at the latter part of 2018, God told me to put this book together and uh, help other people so that they can understand the importance of decreeing and declaring a thing. And so I started writing this book and then I, uh, it was released in January of 2019. And so uh, it kind of moved at a snail's pace initially but then God told me to revisit it this year during this pandemic and, um, you know, just share it with the people. And God has been blessing it to uh, reach so many people in this season because we're in a season right now. There's so much darkness and chaos going on in our world. And so yeah. we really need to decree and declare a thing. 
And um, all of the declarations in the book, of course, are in alignment with the word of God. All right. All we got to do is to open up our mouth and say what, whatever it is that we want God to manifest in our life according to his will and his word, and it will happen. Yeah, especially in times like these, uh, we need some encouragement. We need some empowerment. So, so let's, let's talk about some of the days in decree and talk about the manifestations of God. Uh, one of the first, you want to, talk, let's talk about day one. Okay, day one is this decree is I decree that I will have what God promised me. And okay. so many people, when they face dark times like this, a lot of times we uh, don't believe God going to still manifest what he told us, he, what he promised us. God may have promised you something a year ago or two years ago. And so what I want you to, what I want the reader to do is to still, man, to still decree that thing, you know, God, you told me that I was going to uh, be married. You told me that I was going to have a business. You told me that I was going to have a church. You told me that I was going to have a child. Whatever it is that God promised you, whether it was a year ago, two, three, four, five years ago, I just want people to know that the promises of God in him are yes and amen. And if he told you that he was going to do something, that settles it. He is going to do it. He's going to fulfill the promise. So I want people people again to understand the importance of decreeing and declaring with their own mouth and whatever it is that they decree is going to manifest. We have to learn to, the importance of speaking life into every situation. Proverbs 18 21 tells us life and death are in the power of the tongue. So when we speak the word of God, we're speaking life. So when we're speaking and declaring with our mouths the promises of God, they're going to manifest. We we just got to continue speaking his word. We got to continue declaring positivity uh, with our mouths. All right. All right. Then day six talks, day six talks about walking in your purpose. Give me that declaration. Oh, wow. And you know what? I wanted to hone in on this one because right now I am actually having virtual classes, teaching people about the importance of walking in their God-given purpose. You know, we're in a season, of course, where it is so necessary and it's critical that everybody put their hands to the plow and do what it is that God has called them to do. Of course, we have to take baby steps when we mm -hmm. first start out, but we will get there. Now, walking in your purpose, again, is so very instrumental and I want people to decree because here's the thing, each and every one of us has a purpose. Some people know what their purpose is and some people don't know what their purpose is but of course we have to start by seeking God about our purpose but even though if we don't know what it is we still can declare it in the atmosphere I will walk in my purpose in Although you may not be walking in your purpose at this very moment, you will walk in it at some point. You may go through a hard trial, a hard tribulation in your life, and at that point, you're seeking God even the more. You know what, God? Hey, I just, I just surrender to you, God. I give it all to you. And at that point is when God can actually reveal to you what your purpose is. So again, that is another declaration that God wanted me to include in this book because we all are instrumental. We all are an asset to the kingdom of God and each and every one of us has a purpose. And so, yeah, that's one Good. That, uh, very, very powerful. Good. Now, day 19 is important, especially now where people are tired of being in the house, tired of doing what they told you to do, tired of wearing your mask, you're tired, and you ready to give up because bills are due and you don't have a job. Tell me about day 19. Oh, uh, it's just, I will not, I decree, I, I will not quit. Come yeah. hell or high water, it doesn't matter how things look. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter what the media says. We have to get to a place, because here's the thing. There's so much negativity in the atmosphere right now. There's so yeah. many false reports. There's so much confusion. There's so much yeah. chaos. And so a lot of times when you're seeing this stuff and you're hearing this stuff, mm -hmm. it can actually, you know, uh, put you in a place to where you just want to just throw in the towel, especially yeah. those people who have lost their jobs. Some people. Yeah. 
people yeah. are at the brink of losing their home and yeah. you just feel like just throwing in the towel even those of us who are on the front line uh clergy some yeah. people just feel like just throwing in the towel but what i want people to do is to decree i will not quit because here's the thing quitting is not it's it's an option but it could not be the children of god's option it could no longer be our option. We will not quit. We will stand because quitting is not a part of our spiritual DNA. And so that is a part uh, of that, that declaration. It's letting the people know, letting the reader know that uh, it's personal. It's not a part of your spiritual DNA. You do not have to quit. Although you are at the brink of quitting, you feel like quitting because there's so much going on, but you cannot quit. You cannot yeah. quit right through here, through this dark season of your your life through this pandemic because here's the on the flip side of this thing god is still blessing in the uh, in the process in the midst of this pandemic he's still blessing and so i want people to look toward heaven where all of their help comes from and just realize that god is on their side god is actually on the inside of them and they have every reason to get up and push forward and not quit yeah. So that's a that's a declaration that definitely needs to be said over and over in this season. And when the reader gets this book, they get a chance to decree, you know, hey, I will not quit. Yeah, yeah, and that that's major, especially now. Exactly. Uh, and uh, day twenty six talks about connecting with the right people. How important is it? Uh, even now that we connect with the right people. It is so very important. You know, you have to be surrounded by positive-minded people. I just feel like when you're surrounded by positive-minded people, they will help catapult you. They will help uh, push you toward your destiny. They will yeah. help um, you give birth to things that have been locked up on the inside of you, have been lying dormant. So it's very critical to be um, connected to positive, like-minded people. You know, when we connect with negative, not minded people, they seemingly drain us. They talk us out of, of doing what God has called us to do. Uh, if you want to start a business, you get around somebody negative. You won't start the business. If you want to write a book, you get around somebody negative. You won't write the book. If you want to get married and God has told you that that's your spouse, you get around somebody negative. They're going to talk you out of doing it. So I just wanted people to... Um, the reader when they get this book to understand the importance of declaring with your mouth, you know, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to connect with like-minded people. I'm going to connect with positive-minded people. I'm going to connect with people who have the ability to give me that positive, that empowerment push, that spiritual push that I need to move forward in life. And so that's what day 26 is all about, just connecting. And in this season right now, again, it's very critical that we connect with the right people and we just allow God to give us the strength to disconnect from the people who have been just draining us you know that negative energy it, it keeps you in a place of stagnation and yeah. so it's so very important that each one of us connect with the right people uh in this season of our lives it's so very critical how important for how important was it for you that you stayed connected to the right people along your journey well, it was very important because, again, I've been connected to the wrong people. I've been connected mm -hmm. to it by way of relationships, uh, mm -hmm. friendships. I have been connected with the wrong people, uh, friends who don't support. Uh, that that's, that's not good to be connected to people who don't want to support you, whatever, whatever it is you're doing. If you're starting a business, you're getting married, you're starting a ministry, and mm -hmm. you have friends who don't support you, that's, that's, those are not friends to me, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I feel like genuine friends who God have placed in your life will support you. They will pray with you. They would encourage you. And yeah. so it was very important that I connected to the right people on my journey because I know God has a call upon my life. I know God uses me um, in different capacities of ministry. And mm -hmm. I have to have somebody in my life that will hold me accountable, that will, um, push me that will pray with me when i'm too weak to even pray for myself and so it's, it's just very it's just very critical to have like-minded positive people in your corner uh along your journey yeah so so with these declarations 30 30 declarations right yeah uh, that you decree and how how would you 
how would you say, how important would you say that it is to start your day with declarations and then even when you close your day to confirm those those same declarations? I, I say it's good because, you know, it's good to hear something twice. You know, you're speaking in your spirit because the more you say it, the more you're going to believe it. And uh, you're going to believe God for that manifestation. So, hey, there's nothing wrong. And here's the thing. This is a small book you can put in your purse. If a guy were to read it, he can just put it in his, fold it up and put it in his back pocket, put it in your car. You get up that morning, you read day one. Uh, you read uh, day one at noon around your lunchtime and then you can read it at night before you go to bed especially if you're at a place to where you're really believing God uh, whatever that declaration is saying if you're really believing God if you're at that place in your life literally you would want to read it more than one time I've had uh, some of my readers here recently said that they read the book in one just in one sitting they read it literally in one sitting and so that's a good thing that speaks volume right there and so they they said that they were not able to put it down because the declarations were so powerful and here's the thing you decree it and let God manifest it so you're speaking these you're continuously speaking these declarations over your life so you can read it however you want to read it when you get it but it's so, it's so very uh, instrumental that you know you get these declarations in your spirit and so therefore yeah. you have something to look forward for you can believe God for the manifestation the more you read it good all right so so for the person who is uh, even now in a depressed state, right, that's maybe feeling like there's a lot on them right now, what, what encouragement could you give them in this, in this time where we are so uncertain about what the future holds? Uh, many people, you know, are, are craving being able to go back into church houses and things like that. But what, what encouragement could you give them uh, because of your own personal journey that can help them along the way. Well, that is, I would not be depressed. It's actually one of the de declarations as well, but I would just tell that person who's uh, depressed right now or you're feeling oppressed, I would tell you to simply just to let God remind you of how he brought you out last time when you were depressed. There's always something all of us can look at that God has done for us. And so just as you go to God and as you pray to God, ask him to remind you of what he did last time when you you were when you didn't know where your next meal was going to come from ask God to remind you hey you remember I took care of you last time ask God when you were at the brink of getting evicted before how he turned that situ situation around how he showed up at the on the spur of the moment he showed up at midnight and he turned that situation around when you were dealing with sickness in your body there's so many things that can bring about depression but when you were dealing with sickness in your body and how God healed you that last time Ask God to remind you of how he did it before. And that same God that did it before, he's able to do it again. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of us. And so here's the thing. Another person, you may be depressed and you, you can't even say, you know, God, remind me of these things. But all you can say is just Jesus. Sometimes we just have to call Jesus. Hey, we know demons got to scatter. They got to leave when you just say Jesus. And yeah. so sometimes when we, and when our backs are up against the wall and we're mm -hmm. feeling so depressed and we're feeling so oppressed and we just don't know how we're going to make it, sometimes all you got to do is just sit there and say, Jesus. Yeah. Just say, Jesus, until you feel that heaviness lift from you, you just got to say, Jesus. And, and I found myself at times where that's what I had to say. I found myself in depressed moments and I couldn't pick up my Bible to read it. Literally, it was even hard for me to pray. And all I could say was Jesus. Mm -hmm. I could repeatedly say Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I started feeling that thing lift off me. I started feeling that the, the spirit of depression lift, that spirit of oppression lift, that spirit of frustration lift. And I can imagine, again, in this time, there are so many people that that's dealing with so much at the very same time. But if you can't say anything else, just say Jesus. Yeah, yeah, good. What advice you you've written eleven books and you you're working on another one? Yes, I have written eleven books. This is my eleventh book. 
I love to write. I love to encourage. Listen, and I'm getting ready to release another one in the very near future. And it's for single ladies who desire to be married. Um, wow. I am worthy enough for marriage. 30, 30 prayers to prepare me to become a wife. You know, a lot of times, you know, we want the husband and I thank God that I am married, but a lot of times we're just not prepared to be married at, at a point of time in our life. And so sometimes God has to prepare us. And so that book will come here soon. Uh, we have to be prepared to be a wife. We have to know how to manage our finances. We have to know how to have great communication skills. And what I mean by that is, you know, a man doesn't want to be in the house with a contentious, angry woman. So we have to learn how to be calm. We have to learn how to respect ourselves. A lot of women don't know how to respect themselves. And so that's one of the things that's listed in the book uh, on how to prepare you for marriage. And so uh, it's 30 days uh, to 30 uh, prayers to prepare you for marriage. So that book will be released here in the very near future within the month. All right. So, so for those who are aspiring to be authors, uh, I'm, I'm working on one myself, but not, I'm not 10 or 12, but uh, I'm just trying to get past one. <laughs> what, what are some tips that you, that you can give, some advice that you can give to those who have a book in them, right? Who may just not know what to do. So what, what advice would you give them uh, 12 books later? <laughs> Well, listen, actually, I offer one-on-one -on -one, uh, writer's classes. I mm -hmm. literally uh, take you by the hand. I've developed a writer's manual, which provides 10 steps on how to write a book and to get it published. So mm -hmm. I actually, um, it's the $85 special now, and that comes with the manual, and it comes with a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session via Zoom. It's like an hour and a half where I go through those steps. I answer any questions that you have. And of course, everyone who has have, uh, for the most part, attended my class. They have authored their books. I've literally assisted over six authors so far, far yeah. who have now published their books. Good. If they came to my class. So if anybody who aspires to write a book and you know it's lying dormant and you know it's the season for you to write that book, hey, don't sit on that book. Uh, write yeah. that book because here's the thing, somebody needs it. Whatever yeah. your book is about, somebody needs it. Whether it's one person, God is going to get the glory. Somebody needs it. So again, if you need help, I am here to help you. I have, uh, God has allowed me and given me the information to share with those who aspire to write a book. And so I'm here just reach out to me and I would be happy to assist you. Good. Now, now tell the people how they can keep up with all things Yolanda Nickerson and how they can get your product. Okay. So I have a website, www.victimtovirtuous.com. That is my website. I am also uh, on Facebook. I have a personal Facebook page, Yolanda Marshall Nickerson. And also I have a, an author's page, uh, Yolanda Marshall Nicker is Nickerson as well. And so you can connect with me on Facebook. You can, um, that way you can follow me um, and just connect with me. You can stay, in a, stay abreast of everything that I have coming up, whether it's uh, virtual conferences, book readings, uh, new releases, et cetera. Okay, good. And they can get all, all 12, well, all 11 books on your website and now. And so they can get that the books are on the website as well. They are on Amazon.com and they sure. are on uh, BarnesandNoble.com. So they can go there to get them as well. If they desire to have an, a signed copy, they can reach out to me on Facebook and um, I will be happy to autograph their copy and put it in the mail for them. So they can get it that way as well. Okay, great. One final thought before we go. All right. So give us something that we can, that you want to, to leave here knowing that Yolanda <laughs> Nicholson said. So I just want you all to take away this here. I want you all to know that um, whatever you decree, it has the ability to manifest if you believe God. So um, if you believe him wholeheartedly, whatever you speak out of your mouth, it will manifest. I want to leave you with this as well. Make sure you always speak positivity. Uh, when you speak positivity, that uh, that pretty much outweighs the negativity. Surround yourself with positive people uh, that uh, has the uh, that have the ability to push you toward your
your destiny. And um, just hold on to God's unchanging hand in this season of your life and know that we are, we're going to get on the other side of this uh, pandemic real soon. Believe God for that as well. Continue to eat. It, continue to even decree that in the atmosphere you know god i decree that this pandemic will end soon yeah. decree it in the atmosphere because we're all tired of it we're all ready for it to end so decree that in the atmosphere as well because again when you decree a thing it has the ability to manifest good well again thank you yolanda so, so much for joining us today thank you all for joining us on this virtual book club listen during times like these you have to be careful of what you take in. And so that's why we are offering you the virtual book club so that you can have something positive that you can read, that you can take in and that you can declare out uh, as well. So I want you to make sure you share this again, share it now with somebody that needs to know that you can rise above what you're going through. You just have to decree it and watch God manifest it. My name is Richard Holman and I want you to know we love you. There's nothing you can do about it. God bless you, God keep you. Remember, see you next Tuesday at six o'clock. Thank you for having me.